Petra Krásný studentí. In today's lesson I would like to talk about memory and languages. And before I go further, I would like to uh, define two terms, memory and dual process. Memory is the process of information retention. And the term of dual process refers to the idea that some behaviors and cognitive processes are the product of two uh, different systems. Uh, these systems have been called uh, system one and system two. And precisely human memory operates uh, according to such a dual process. System one uh, is this automatic uh, routine, uh, unconscious uh, thought process which interacts uh, with uh, the much more conscious, a thoughtful, a solution-based analytical thought known as uh, the system two. I believe it's quite similar to the memory of a computer. And so similarly, at each of these levels uh, exist the processes of uh, encoding, storage and retrieval. And this all started because of this Ebbinghaus forgetting curve. Ebbinghaus conducted an experiment uh, during which he was testing the memory retention over time of a sequence of nonsensical syllables. And I really thought of you. I thought of people who are learning foreign language, but especially uh, the Czech because for many of you who are not familiar with Slavic languages, when you come first across an expression, it must sound like a sequence of nonsensical syllables. Nej nerozradostňovávatelnější. Does it make any sense to you? Let's see first how memory works and then what could we do to tame it and make it work for us even more and better? Let's say something about memory structure first and then about um, processes of memory. Memory structure, system one, system two. So system one uh, would be in the usual educational context associated with the automatic routine um, memorization whilst system two is more related to critical thinking and uh, solving of problems so let's give a concrete example system one i give you a verb for example uh, to learn uchitsa Učím se, učí se, učí se, učíme se, učíte se, učí se. System one. System two, I will give you an assignment. You can use a dictionary for expressions, even for an infinitive of a verb, but you cannot see uh, the different uh, persons, the declension. So I will tell you a sentence which I would like you to translate into Czech. Learning Czech is an adventure and anyone who is learning Czech can relate to this. If your system one is solid and concrete, you will be able to come up with a solution to this sentence. Because I'm not asking you just regurgitate uh, how to decline the verb uh, to learn for all the persons in indicative. Učím se, učí se, učí se, učíme se, učíte se, učí se. But I'm asking you, make something out of it, something better, something more constructed. The difficulty was to assign the correct form of this verb, which you have previously learned. So, Učit se je dobrodružství, to put a simple infinitive, because you have je 
the verb, and then to put correctly the third person of singular to the každý, system one, system two. So now you understand why it is extremely important to have a solid system one. In other words, critical thinking, system two, requires a lot of well-memorized knowledge and automatic thinking in order to operate quickly and accurately. Let's talk now about the processes of memory. There are three of them, encoding, storage and retrieval. Encoding refers to how memory is taken in, altered even, for better storage. And the memory is usually encoded through four methods. Visual encoding, how something looks. Tactile encoding, how something feels. Acoustic encoding, how something sounds. And semantical encoding, what something means. So we would think that the tactile encoding is not used very much when we learn languages. But what about people who read Braille? They must touch. The semantical, of course, we are using it. The visual, we do use it because we need to look how a word is written. This is why I'm encouraging you to write everything. Because the process of writing will pay later. And the acoustic, of course, we use it. This is why you need a teacher. This is why you need me. What is your favorite method of memorizing? Semantical, acoustic, visual or tactile? The second memory process is storage. How, where, for how long, and how accurately a memory is stored within the memory system. Usually we talk about two types of memory, short-term memory and long-term memory. And once the information is stored within the long or short-term memory, we will need to retrieve or recall it. And it's this recall or retrieval process which will really determine how good our memory is and how well we perform on memory tests. So what is retrieval? Retrieval is the process through which we access the stored information. So the most frequent question is, where did I put this? And apparently the recall depends on where the memory was initially stored. Items from short-term memory are retrieved in the order they have arrived, whilst information from a long-term memory is essentially retrieved through associations. So Hermann Ebbinghaus, he noticed something which we already know, that the curve was increasing with time. The longer time elapsed from the initial um, memorizing process, from the learning, the higher was the forgetting rate. And he concluded also that it was time and the lack of attention that worked against successful memorizing. Inattention and time. 
so in the second part I would like to talk about what we can do in order to make our memory work better when we learn Czech and languages in general. I don't feel really comfortable around spiders. This is dreadful. It's moving so quickly. Oh. So it disappeared in between the lattices. Oh. I believe my memory is now... I just came here because of the wind. I thought it would be a better idea. Okay. So now we know how the memory uh, works and the question is can we make it work even better and put it into service of learning languages more efficiently and if so how? What can a useful teacher do uh, to help you promote better retention and better recall of information. There are mainly three techniques. They are testing effect, spacing and interleaving. This testing effect, well, it's the very well known um, testing of information retention over a period of time when learning. Apparently, if you frequently test your freshly acquired knowledge, not only you will know how well you have memorized, understood and memorized a given topic, but also you will memorize better than if you didn't uh, test yourself. So the, the very effect of testing is conductive to better memorization. So testing is not a torture invented by teachers to annoy students. It's a useful technique. The second technique is spacing. A spacing effect is when you repeatedly learn and recall information over a prolonged time span. You are more likely to retain such information and you can put it into perspective with another technique which is the, the famous cramming day before exam and apparently this technique doesn't work as well as spacing usually it is uh, forgotten uh, much quicker than if you repeat and recall uh, the learned subject over a longer period of time. The third technique is interleaving and it refers to learning in one session multiple related skills instead of a method which sometimes was used which was blocking and it means that you learn only one topic at the same time. So you concentrate on one little portion of the material which you need to learn. And apparently the results are much better when you uh, proceed with the interleaving effect. So we should probably include these three techniques, testing, spacing and interleaving in our next lesson. And there are also methods 
which can be used by the student. And they are for, uh, there is state-dependent memory, schemes, chunking, and deliberate practice. State-dependent memory refers to the situation when you recall a given information in the same state of mind and body, probably, you have been in when you first learned this information. I don't know if you can achieve always the same state of mind. I don't believe this is possible, but at least you can um, strive for being in roughly the same environment at the same period of a day and maybe in between the same tasks. Personally, I love to do difficult or very boring tasks before something extremely pleasant. Because if I first take the pleasure, then I will not be able to do any uh, difficult tasks afterwards. And of course you should be learning in a very beautiful surroundings. Your room should be absolutely impeccable and just be the perfect person before you learn Czech. And you will see how good results you will have. What's that? It's a spider. No. Oh. I will just have a look. Our friend, the green spider. No, so well, maybe he had migrated through the roof somewhere else. Uh, I don't trust this status quo. I believe he might have go up there. See, in between, in between. Now let me know if you see him. I know better not. Uh, ah! Oh! I took the net with my phone. He must be already dangling some, somewhere, but I can't see. Anyway, the second technique are schemas, creating schemas, uh, which is a logical organization of information. Basically, it's a logical structure of different types of data. And these schemas or schemata, by the fact that they organize information allow the brain work more efficiently. So they represent kind of a cognitive shortcut. Maybe I should use them in my lessons more. The problem is I don't know how to give them to you. It would be great if you could download schemas which I create because sometimes I use them but I believe I'm too lazy to create web pages. This is my problem. If you have an idea, let me know. Next, the third technique is chunking, and it allows us to group information into more complex ensembles. And this putting information together into groups facilitates retention. So instead of recalling each item of information individually, you just recall the logical group and then the retrieval is more quicker and it's quicker and easy here. So a concrete example would be a vocabulary uh, about weather. So počasí and you have different words. Slunečno, polojasno, zataženo, bouřky, přehánky, déšť, teplo, zima, krupobytí, vítr. But you could create two um, logical groups, two smaller groups. One would be good weather, pěkné počasí, and the other špatné počasí, bad weather. And so in Pěkné počasí, there would be polojasno, slunečno, teplo, 
bezvětří, vánek, hvězdy, jasno. The group of špatné počasí would contain větrno, deštivo, zima, krupobytí, bouška and so on. And surely you wouldn't believe that the fourth is deliberate practice and it means what we all know that when you learn information or a skill you need to practice deliberately intentionally frequently in order to facilitate retention and last question which i'm quite interested in is can we improve memory with food or nutrients in general well i have found that four minerals can improve um, retention we could say it also uh, differently the lack of four minerals can cause serious uh, memory issues these four minerals are iodine copper zinc and magnesium as for food uh, there is all the cruciferous vegetables and also soja lecithin and also for plants ginkgo biloba and omega-3 rich things to eat as avocado and the good old cod liver oil. Mm. Delicious. And there is also a very interesting conclusion to all this, but I will read it because my memory is now fatigued. This. Research suggests bilingualism contributes generally to the maintenance of a healthy brain. Neuroplastic brain changes, including increased gray matter density, have been found in people with skills in more than one language. From children and young adults through to the elderly. And at least one review has found that a lifelong bilingualism is associated with an average delay in the onset of dementia. So on this optimistic note, I wish you